Okay, this is um, an angular momentum problem that I said that I would post. Um, maybe it's a little, I don't really know if it turns out to be too complicated or not, I'm just going to do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, so suppose I have a merry-go-round, which I could assume is a disk. And uh, so it has a mass M and a radius R. And, and this is uh, from a movie, and the Mythbusters did this too, and that's why it's kind of cool. Um, so suppose I shoot a bullet and I hit the a bullet comes in like this and it hits the edge of the of the merry-go-round. Um, what would be the new angular velocity after that happens? Okay. So let's say this is mass uh, m b and it's shot with the velocity v b that way and it collides right on the edge of that and let's just say it sticks. Okay, whether it does or doesn't, let's just say that it does. Okay. Um, so first let me just show you something very important. Can we use the momentum principle in this case? And the answer is no. The answer is no because if I take my system to be the bullet plus the merry-go-round, then could I say this? Can I say the, the change momentum is zero? Um, no, no, I can't. The change momentum is not zero. Uh, we can't really use momentum principle here because what forces are acting on the system? Why well, I have the ground pushing up this way, this is a top view, and gravity pulls down, and those essentially cancel even though not for the bullet, but even with that, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Because this little axle is fixed into the ground. And so when this bullet hits the merry-go-round, then if the axle wasn't fixed, the merry-go-round would slide and spin. But it's fixed. So the, the axle exerts a force this way during some time, and we have no clue what that is. We can actually estimate it. But uh, let's, just, let's just try to find out the angular speed of the, the merry-go-round. But that's why this doesn't really work. I mean, it works. It's just not very... We don't know this F-net. Momentum's not conserved. That's the key for that system. Okay, but what about angular momentum? Okay, so in this case, if we take our same system to be the bullet plus the merry-go-round, then there's no torque on the system. I mean, the bullet exerts a torque on the merry-go-round, the merry-go-round exerts a torque on the bullet but that's inside the system. The axle, if I assume there's no friction, it, it does lets it spin, it doesn't exert any torque. So that means that the change in angular momentum is constant. So I can say this is equal to zero, so L1 equals L2. Okay, so let's say this starts with an angular velocity of zero, and want to find the final. Okay, so what's the initial angular momentum? It's just due to the bullet. So L1, equals R bullet cross P bullet. And now you may be saying, well, that's just crazy. And this is about the, the point right here, O. Uh, because here there's R and P, but as I get closer, P stays the same, but R gets smaller. So shouldn't the angular momentum change? And in fact, it doesn't. The angular momentum is constant because um, Although R gets smaller, the angle between these gets smaller too. So in fact, I can just calculate the angular momentum. Uh, it's going to be into the board, right? And it's going to have a value L1 equals R MB VB. Because at this point right here, R is the radius of the disk, and they're perpendicular. So remember, the magnitude of L is the magnitude of R, magnitude of P, times the sine of the angle, and that's a 90 degree angle, sine of 90 is 1. So I just get MB uh, times the velocity of the bullet, and that's it. That's my total initial angular momentum. Okay, what about afterwards? Afterwards, I have the disk spinning, 
and it's a rigid object. So I'm going to have to use uh, L2 equals I omega 2, where omega 2 is the angular velocity of the disk. And that's technically wrong. But I'm, I'm no, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to do this for any size bullets, because maybe, maybe it's a basketball, maybe it's a bullet, I don't care. So what's I? We already know the, the magnitude of L2. It's the same as L1. So what's I? I is uh, I disk plus I bullet. We could do it that way. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be one half big M R squared is the moment of inertia of a disk. I, I just derived that in the previous video unless you're watching this video before that one. Then I derived that in the future. Uh, what about the bullet? It's just a point mass. So the moment of inertia of a bullet is just going to be equal to mass of the bullet R squared. So um, that's my moment of inertia. So what's my magnitude of the angular velocity? The magnitude is going to be equal to uh, L1 divided by I. So it's going to be R M B V B over I, one half M plus M B R squared. So let's just say omega equals one of the R's cancels. Um, I could I could do some little math magic here. I could say velocity of the bullet over one half M over M B plus 1 r. Now we should check some things, okay, because uh, we don't want to just not check things. Does this have the right units? Well, this is in um, meters per second. No units, no units. Divided by r. So I get 1 over seconds, which is the unit for angular speed in radians per second. That's the same thing. What else should I check? What if I, what happens is, as I increase the mass of the bullet. As I increase the mass of the bullet, this term is going to get smaller and this term is going to get closer to, um, I'm going to get a higher angular speed. And also if I increase the velocity of the bullet, I'm going to have a higher angular speed. Okay, one last thing. How much time have I used? Seven minutes. Okay. One last thing. What if I wanted to find the loss in thermal, the increase in thermal energy of the bullet plus the merry-go-round? If I take the system to be the bullet plus the merry-go-round, then work equals delta K rotational plus delta E thermal plus delta E K, delta K translational. Okay, so I have three real forms of energy that I can look at. Rotational energy, translational energy, and, and thermal energy. If that's my system, there's no work done because there's no really external forces. So this is equal to zero. So what's the change in rotational kinetic energy? Delta K rotational would be the final kinetic energy, one half I omega squared minus initial, which is zero. What's the change in translational kinetic energy? Okay, here's a trick. What happens to the bullet afterwards? It still has translational kinetic energy. But if I use this I right here, I'm already taking into account that motion of the bullet as rotational kinetic energy. You can't count it twice. So this would be the final would just be zero minus one half mb vb squared. And then so if this plus this plus this is zero, I could find delta E therm would be negative the rotational kinetic change in rotational kinetic energy. So it would be would be this one half mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet squared, minus one half I omega squared, where omega is right there, and I is that I right there. Cool? Okay.